Hey, what's happening, guys? I uh, want to talk a little bit more about the ANET A8 3D printer today. I've been having a lot of fun with it. You guys saw this Arduino and breadboard holder in uh, yesterday's video, and I got a lot of really nice comments about it, so thank you very much. This is one of the latest things I've printed, and it's, um, you know, I've got the system dialed in pretty well now. And I'm starting to get a handle on it. Um, I'm having fun with it, like I said. Like, here's one of the first things I printed, which is a case for my Odroid XU4 single board computer. And uh, I'm almost embarrassed to turn this over. Yeah, that's kind of ugly on the bottom there, I know. It was, uh, like I said, one of the first, and I didn't have things quite understood. But I'm getting there. And uh, if you guys are, uh, patrons of mine you've already seen the batman he now guards my oscilloscope and like i said things are going well so we got this and we got that and i'm not going to be doing a whole lot of upgrades because i'm not one of those guys that follow the uh fix it till it breaks mentality i'm more along the lines of one of those guys who say uh leave well enough alone but i am going to do a couple of upgrades and the first one is we're going to put um, MOSFET controls in for both the hotbed and the extruder. So let's pop these out of the bags here and take a look at them. All right, so here's a pair of MOSFETs that I got off of Amazon, and I will link to them down below. I think it's funny, I bought these as a, as a kit, as a set, and they're exactly the same, except they use different heat sinks. Kind of, I guess, a whatever we had on hand that day is what you're getting kind of thing, right? So let's see if you can, uh, or if I can get enough light in here. Well, uh, that's probably damn near impossible for you guys to read. But uh, the MOSFET is an HA210N06. And I grabbed the data sheet here. So it's from Howlin Electronics. It's a 210 amp, 60 volt end channel MOSFET um, with an RDS on a four milliohms. Four milliohms. Okay, I thought that said four ohms at first. I was going to say, wow, that is incredibly high. But you can see we have a drain to source voltage of uh, 60 volts, uh, <laughs> continuous drain current of 210 amps at 25 degrees C, 130 amps at 100 degrees C, and our pulse drain current at 25 degrees C uh, of avalanche energy, 800 millijoules. So this seems like it will be a pretty acceptable MOSFET. So to hook these to the board, I'm going to use some 14 gauge silicon wire. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring a pair of the silicon wires from the power supply over here to the DC in. And then we'll use the wires that come with the kit from the out to the hotbed and from the out to the extruder. And then this little JST connector here that says control in came with a couple wires that will go to the main board. So let me go and get that hooked up and we'll take it over to the printer and install it. All right, I've hooked the MOSFETs up to the extra connections on the power supply. You can see it has three positives and three negatives so there's plenty of room to run everything directly from the power supply to what I would call the control side of the board. And that'll just keep everything nice and neat. And keep it safe. Well, safer. All right, guys, I plugged it in. And as you can see here, through the mess of spaghetti. Everything is connected 
and the power lights on the MOSFETs are lit. So if we come up here, press the menu key, quick setting, we'll start with a home, how's that? Everything in its proper place. And then we'll do a preheat PLA. And if you can hear the fan, normally without the MOSFETs, when I would press preheat PLA, the fan would slow down. It should not slow down now. Or the whole thing may go blow up. Interesting. The fan slowed down, even though my preheaters are on. I don't know what to make of that. Also, the bed heater's on. I don't know. But, we'll see how it does from here on. Um, the only other upgrade I intend on doing is I printed this out, which is the belt tensioner here for the X belt. This fits in here like so. And you put a couple screws through there to hold it tight. And you move that bearing out to there. So that's the only other upgrade I'm going to do because Frankly, the thing works, and it works good. And that's the end of that. So, not much else to say. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, subscribe, and share. Big thanks to all my patrons. So that's it. I'm out. Peace. Peace.